Welcome to Positively Las Vegas, a look at the good things happening around the valley. I'm Kalina Estrinos. For the next 30 minutes, we're going to share the latest stories that showcase the reasons why we love Las Vegas. That means the people, the businesses, and all the activities that make the valley a great place to live. We'll also share fun things to do in Las Vegas each week. And tonight we are taking you inside a Nevada built company that employs thousands building massive heavy duty machinery. Yeah, they're based right in Henderson now starting from humble beginnings. The company today now has operations across the globe. This is extreme manufacturing. Extreme manufacturing builds what's called telehandlers, forklifts equipped with large telescoping booms. The bigger ones can lift up material heavier than an elephant, more than 80 feet in the air, and then extend outwards. He's basically finishing the assembly on the cab. Mike Henderley runs the sprawling Henderson campus located near the 215 and Westlake Mead Parkway, which also makes the Snorkel brand lifts designed to move people. As we look down the assembly line from obviously it starts there and it kind of works back this way. Yeah, we have six working stations. Right now I'm doing about one and a half machines a day. When we get busier, we get parts, we get people, it'll be two, two and a half machines a day off each each line. Mike runs things here, but Don Ahern is the owner. When I first walked in here, I noticed two things. It is a massive facility and it is clean. I mean, it is virtually spotless. I feel like I could eat dinner in here. Yeah. <laughs> well, President Trump did. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you he know. He dinner in here. Yeah, yeah he nice. gave his rally right here. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, he ate here too. If you've heard the name Don Ahern, you probably know he's not shy about his devoted support of former President Donald Trump, who held a campaign rally at Ahern's Henderson facility last year. That rally leading to a $3,000 fine from the city of Henderson for violations of pandemic related restrictions. But what you may not know is Don's multinational business came from humble Nevada built beginnings. My father owned a truck stop, which is now the Stratosphere Tower. And that was 68 years ago. And we started renting equipment out, filling trucks with fuel, cars out front, renting equipment and through the 50s. From that gas station, mm -hmm. you built, this is a worldwide company now. And I don't think most people in Southern Nevada realize that. No, no, they don't. Uh, we don't sit around and try to brag about it, but I think we're in 17 different countries. Today, this Henderson facility alone manufactures more than 1,000 machines a year, but that's not what Don is most proud of. I'm most proud of the thousands of people that we hire. We hire almost 4,000 people worldwide. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that we provide a continued job with benefits, health benefits, retirement plans. Yeah, and on that note, Extreme Manufacturing is still right now hiring for several more positions, and we do have more information. It's on our website. Just go to ktnv.com slash extreme. Yeah, they do keep things clean there, don't they? Well, new tonight, one woman's quest to revive the West Side. In the early 1940s and 50s, the historic West Side was once a place where black entertainers and families thrived. Now, community advocates say the lack of resources, crime and poverty pollute the area. As we continue to bridge the divide, 13 Action News anchor Alicia Patillo joins us in studio to explain one woman's mission to redevelop the historic West Side. Alicia. Hey, Tricia, when it comes to saving the West Side, there is a lot to do. And Tashika Lawson is starting by listening to the community's concerns. I like to think of myself as a community advocate. And for some, a local hero, whatever you call her. Tashika Lawson is on a mission to bring the historic West Side back to life. What really struck me was the buildup that I'm seeing everywhere else, the density that I'm seeing everywhere else, the amenities that you would just have access to anywhere else in the city are everywhere else in the city except here. Frustrated with conditions, Lawson began a journey during the pandemic to revive a side of town that once shined in the 1940s and 50s. I work with an organization called the Historic West Side Revitalization and we would like to get historic West Side and greater West Side region to actually 
be on par with the rest of the city. And that's by bringing in resources, um, actually helping the residents to be, get, become more knowledgeable in the different things that are available to them. And then for us to actually just start bringing the equity that we see are happening everywhere else, being brought everywhere else to this community. And the work isn't easy. When she's not running her bookkeeping business, she's spending her free time advocating for the voiceless on the west side. We'd have people ask us questions and then we would take those questions to City Hall because the west side community, is it's they ha have a lot of people, especially older people, who are afraid to deal with the city for multiple reasons when it comes to, you know, interactions and possibly d imminent domain. Like, they're terrified that their properties are going to get taken. So they don't want to speak out because they're terrified. But Lawson and her team can't do it alone. They're counting on the city to do their part. I won't say that I don't know if the city does not care about this area. It just has a different... It may have a different plan for this area. The city says it does have a plan. It's called the 100 Plan, and it was created back in 2016 in hopes to invest in the historic West Side. City leaders identified eight major areas that need redevelopment, and so far, they've opened new basketball courts at the Doolittle Complex and added art sculptures to the area. The city says in 2022 they plan to kick off the West Side Mural Project, a farming facility and a 10,000 square foot workforce education and training center. The new center will focus on entry level skills in construction trades, technology and health care. The city tells 13 Action News funding for many of the new projects have been donated through the mayor's fund. While Lawson appreciates the efforts by the city, she says the West Side community needs to know they are addressing their day-to-day -day issues and ways to improve quality of life for West Side residents. Don't just dangle carrots in front of people. Please come down, open up the West Side school so that people can interact with you. Open up the property you have down Jackson. We know that several of different community organizations have, had, have asked for access to be able to get the work started in a place we know that you want it to happen. The conversation doesn't end here. In the next few weeks, I plan to hear directly from residents on the west side about their concerns. Plus, I will be sitting down with Ward 5 Councilman Creer to discuss some of the challenges and solutions. Alicia Patillo, 13 Action News. Welcome back to Positively Las Vegas. For more details on any of the stories you're watching today, just visit our website, ktv.com slash PositivelyLV. After multiple ownerships and also name changes, the long-stalled Fountain Blue project is now back on again. The resort hotel on the north end of the Strip is now resuming full construction efforts and now is slated to open within a couple of years. 13 Action News reporter John Dommel gives us a rare look inside the grounds and tells us why this time will be different. Fountain Blue is once again a comeback story for the city of Las Vegas and with an estimated 6,000 permanent jobs with an additional 3,300 construction jobs leading up to that point, it plays a vital role in the future of our city. <laughs> what makes this time different from all the other times? <laughs> well, the economy is on a rebound. Um, this is really a, a show that Las Vegas, the Renaissance of Las Vegas, we're coming back. Resort World across the street just got finished. Um, so it's, it's so exciting. And I think this time it's really going to happen. That big blue building on the strip first broke ground in 2007. A recession and a pandemic later, along with ownership complications, it's finally back on the rails. And the tax revenue from the finished product will help revitalize more than the north end of the strip. Which we can then use for bonds and the redevelopment agency goes all the way from here down to, down to Maryland Parkway all along Sahara. So we'll be able to build, you know, hopefully thousands of apartments and some mixed use and some other really fun things. It's been sitting there for over a decade, stuck in time. And there are no plans to start from scratch. The 67-story building is said to be in great shape. Being dry, it's, it's pristine. It's just a, it's a, it's a kind of a perfect scenario. You know, our brand is well established in South Florida, known all over the world, and we're very pumped. We're very, we're very excited, and uh, 
We've got a lot of work to do, and uh, we'll be, well, you know, it's, it's got 100% of our attention. Yeah. It'll open as Fountain Blue Las Vegas, finally becoming the sister property to the luxury hotel in Florida by the same name. Without badmouthing it, it's been a tremendous eyesore. Uh, it's so big, you can't miss it. You see the holes, the windows that are missing, and it's just like, oh my God, the, this, the, this represents old Las Vegas, and now when it's done, it'll be the future. So it, you couldn't be more transformational, uh, so I'm so proud. Fountain Blue is scheduled to open by the end of 2023. Reporting in Las Vegas, John Dommel, 13 Action News. Now, several times a year, Family Court dedicates a day just for its judges to finalize adoptions. Lately, they're being done virtually, but no less officially. My co-anchor, Dave Corvassier, was in a local home right around Halloween while the family dressed up for the big ceremony. So I met them in early 2019 when they were um, their case was assigned to me as their new CASA. Andrea Rapano explains how the two girls she took under her wing were very special. But there was something about them when we met where I just kind of knew they were going to play a much bigger role in my life. And then came the turning point. Nobody really wants teens. You know, teens are hard. Okay, so, you know, we have to find a place for them, but more than likely they're going to be separated. And I said no. She was amazing. She supported us unconditionally, um, loved us like we were her own. Which brings us to this day, right before Halloween, when Francesca there in the blue and Christina in the red join an attorney, a judge, and their caseworker in a Zoom call from family court that legally makes them all a permanent family. Accordingly changing their names and adding you, Anna, as their parents. So then, when it was all over, Not a dry eye in the place, and not a doubt in the world that this was all one loving family. It feels like I've lived here for a really long time. It's like, it's really welcoming. They're lock, stock, and barrel. My girls are mine. <laughs> that was Dave Carvassier. They are reporting. If you want to pursue an adoption locally, be sure to call our Wednesday's child partner, Raise the Future. The number is 702-436-6335. And to become a CASA volunteer and court appointed special advocate for abused children, you can call CASA at 725-244-9939. Wednesday's child is sponsored by CASA. Welcome back to Positively Las Vegas. For more details on any of the stories you're watching today, just visit our website, ktmv.com slash PositivelyLV. Well, for the past several years, we have highlighted a number of different veterans, giving you a glimpse of their successes, their setbacks, and their impacts on the community. And so in today's Veterans Voice, our anchor Kalina Estrinos now takes a look back at some of those veterans and also why serving our country is something that they all hold so close to their hearts. I spent 30 years in the United States Army. Um, I actually loved every single minute of it. I was in the Air Corps, when it was called Air Corps. I was 23 when I joined. My whole life, basically, I've always wanted to be in the military. Actually, my dad had four other brothers that were in the military. So it was in our family to do this. Grandfather, my uncle, and my father all went to the Naval Academy. September 11th happened, and I joined September 17th, 2001. Um, I was definitely trying to help the country and do whatever I could. Just always wanted to fight for our freedom and do my part. Vietnam was uh, was not, it wasn't a picnic, uh, it, it was war. On my 33rd mission, I got shot down on the island of Sicily. I had my bone shattered, my arm was hanging off of my elbow pretty much. As soon as I was hit, like a, a hundred pound weight just holding my elbow down, and I couldn't bring my arm up, I couldn't move it. They shot it at me all the way down, I was bullets were whizzing by me. And so when I got on the ground, I knew I was gonna be shot, so I just uh, went like that. August 28th is the day it was killed, 2011, so it's 10 years coming up never gets easier, never gets easier. I feel very emotional about it. I love America, I love this country. I still miss it, I miss it almost every day, still have dreams about it, happy dreams, I have nightmares, but um, 
it's just something it's me and I'm, I'm proud of it I don't take it back everything everything that I've experienced from the military all the people that I've met in the military I don't regret any of it because it made me the person that I am today and always reflect on how great we have it here in the United States I'm Kalina Estrinos 13 Action News well, the wedding industry is expecting a big boost from international business, which, of course, they've sorely missed now for the past 20 months. And 13 Action News reporter Sean Delancey was there for one of the first international weddings since the pand pandemic began. He joins us now live with the impact on the Valley. Sean. Yeah, Trisha and Todd, getting married is one of the main reasons to come to Las Vegas from places like Europe, Australia, and a whole lot more. One wedding chapel owner says that she is pumped to welcome people back and spread the love. This wedding march to French tunes is an important moment in Las Vegas history. This couple, Lilian and Roland Janon, are one of hundreds of the first wave of international tourists flying to Las Vegas in more than 20 months. It's, uh, well, it's like uh, a dream. With handwritten vows, the Genons become one of the first couples to travel from abroad for a wedding ceremony in Las Vegas. 30 years after saying I do, they're renewing their vows as in love as day one. <laughs> Watching through misty eyes is a special memory chapel CEO, Joni Moss Graham. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Graham says pre-pandemic, 90% of her business was made up of international travelers getting hitched and the demand never waned even as travel bans kept people away. They said to me many months ago, our bags are packed, they have dust on them, we're waiting. <laughs> Yeah. Lilian yeah. says that there's no place she'd rather spend celebrating her 30-year love to Roland than Las Vegas. Las Vegas is very special for us no. because uh, it's like um, it's like Disneyland for kids. Well, now the Vegas wedding industry is ready to serve because love knows no borders, and this land outside of reality is open for business. Let us bring your vision to reality. Vegas is the place. Now, both the Clark County clerk and the wedding chamber say that it's too early to tell exactly how many international travels will get married this weekend, but they do expect 2022 to be a boom year for weddings. They say that a lot of people pushed it back as far as they could to ensure that it was actually going to happen. Sean Delancey, 13 Action News. Set the date now for more laughter in the new year. Tickets are now available for Wynn's stand-up comedy lineup of 2022. Sebastian Maniscalco returns to the Encore Theater for 12 shows. And Whitney Cummings brings her Touch Me Tour that will have you rolling in the aisles. Go to winlasvegas.com for the full lineup. In the market for a new lunch spot just off the strip, why not go Italian? The new Via Focaccia sandwich shop has opened inside Ellis Island. Chef Romano is making delicious homemade Sicilian favorites like Mama's Chicken Sandwich and the Genovese. Sunday afternoon, step out for the 11th annual NF Hope concert benefiting neurofibromatosis. Many of Las Vegas' most celebrated entertainers join Jeff and Melody Lebo and their daughter Emma on stage at Myron's Cabaret Jazz. Tickets can be purchased through the Smith Center box office. <laughs> For even more great ideas, just head to our website, ktnv.com. Have a great week. Welcome back to Positively Las Vegas. For more details on any of the stories you're watching today, just visit our website, ktnv.com slash PositivelyLV. Well, a big showing of support from the community and Raiders fans. According to the GoFundMe page set up by Tina Tintor's family, they have received more than $98,000 to help with funeral and memorial expenses. The goal was just $7,000, and we reported last week that the Black Hole Las Vegas chapter donated to the GoFundMe. And new this morning, Rolling Stones tore down the house at Allegiant Stadium last night. And while they were kicking off their world tour, 78-year-old frontman Mick Jagger was taking a tour of Las Vegas. He posted a carousel of pictures to Instagram. He went to the Neon Museum, Fremont Street, and even took a picture in front of CJ's Auto Repair on Bonanza. And we caught up with the shop owner and got his reaction. It was definitely cool just to know that. When you look at the picture, you look at him and our name comes out in the background. It, it was honestly, it was really cool. Like definitely worth probably framing it. 
Now he says he learned about Jagger's appearance at his shop by people messaging him. He missed Jagger by just 10 minutes. That shop is going to get a lot of business after that. Thanks for watching Positively Las Vegas on your favorite streaming device. If you miss any part of this week's program, just hit the back button on your remote, scroll down until you see Positively Las Vegas, and you'll find every story we aired in this episode. Stay tuned for more from 13 Action News after the break, and check us out anytime here on KTMV Streaming. Las Vegas News on your time.